Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We're raising public awareness on technology, energy, diversity, and globalization. This show is Center Stage. I'm your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumu Kahua Theater. And we are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumu Kahua Theater. I am really excited to tell you that today my guest is Jessica Jacobs. She's the theater manager of Kennedy Theater here at the University of Hawaii at Manoa campus. Welcome, Jessica. Without further ado, thank you. We've got, you've got all kinds of other stuff in your in your resume that I'd like to talk about, but we'll just start there. With what's going on at Kennedy Theater? What's going on right now? Yeah, let's just yeah. dive in. What have you got? Well, right now we're preparing for next season, which uh, I think about as Kennedy Theater out of the box. The box being the, the four walls of Kennedy Theater. Uh, we're looking at getting some deferred maintenance taken care of during the next school year. That's some electrical upgrades, some soundproofing, uh, a major wish list that's been out there forever for a building that is many years, well, many years old now. It's time for a little internal facelift. Yeah. Uh, but it's giving us the opportunity to look outside of our facility itself for kind of unusual or different performance spaces. And uh, for example, Antigone, which is our first show of the season, it's our Theater for Young Audiences offering, directed by Mark Branner, is literally going to be just outside the walls of Kennedy Theater in the beautiful lawn with the trees and mm. the shaded area. And it's a like 45 minute kind of post-apocalyptic, post fast and furious Antigone that we're hoping will appeal to anybody from middle school on up. Um, so very that outdoor cool. setting, very traditional for Greek theater, but yeah. modern day and postmodern day, you know, it's those kind of opportunities we're looking for. That is really cool. That, uh, well, you know, we were just talking about how innovation, sometimes um, necessity. necessity is the mother <laughs> of invention, innovation. And uh, I love the idea of being forced to have Greek theater outdoors. Mm -hmm. You're taking a risk in Manoa, man. It rains a lot there, you know. I know. And... <laughs> um, trying to be very clear with the director <laughs> that it's a rain or shine show, yeah. but we have our glorious, huge lower lanai that we can shift around the corner onto the lower lanai that has doorways and archways and a protected space big enough for many classrooms of students or a generous oh. audience. I might suggest something to sit on, like a pillow or something, because it is a, a cement slab, but um, you know, we have a backup plan in place. That's so. cool. That's cool. And wouldn't the elements kind of add something to something like Antigone that's so emotionally charged and she's under so much stress that oh, get yeah. some wind, get some, you know, slight dewy rain, no major thunderstorms or flood. I was here for the flood in Manoa. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't want that. I, now, I did a, a performance of Jesus Christ Superstar outside and we got this horrific downpour during the Ooh. crucifixion scene. It was Ooh. spot on. Goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when nature's going to want to... I hope it wasn't a, a mic show. Did you have uh, body mics? Uh, <laughs> the people who had body mics had to run and get rid yeah. of those. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. But we kept going. We kept singing through because it was yeah. perfect, right? Yeah. Uh, I, did a lot of, um, I did a lot of contracting with Fairbanks Shakespeare, which is a rain or shine theater company in Fairbanks, Alaska. So that's land of the 24-hour sun, you yeah. know, and 24-hour oh, yeah. dark, and it, all extremes, and they... It's absolutely beautiful when they are out there dripping wet, shouting Shakespeare lines at each other, sword fighting, glistening, spraying. You know, <laughs> so there's there's opportunities there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let me just, I want to hear about the rest of your season, but mm -hmm. let me ask, did you know about the possibility of not being in the building when the season was decided upon? All We were talking about it all year last year. It wasn't in the realm, it wasn't a real possibility until about January, because that's when um, the people who evaluate what the project's going to look like formalize it and then send it out to bid. So at that point, you know you're on the road because they're asking real contractors for real estimates of what it's going to cost. Gotcha. Um, you know, we're awaiting the final signatures for the actual start of work, um, but that was originally anticipated to be July. And it's been, it, it has been bumped to possibly up to three months after July. So now we're looking at maybe a September 1st start date for a seven month project. Mm. So we're looking at rehoming our shows for most of the season 
but we have tentative plans in place, or plans in place, depending on the show. Um, our second show of the season is A House Divided, which is an immersive theater piece set in a gala. And what better place than our upper lanai for a gala because other groups try to use it for their galas. Yeah. So um, dressing that up for this formal event, which involves, I don't want to give it all away, but it's an exploration of some political themes and but putting it in a framework that we in Hawaii care about. So some of the things that we care about and being immersed in a, theater, a theatrical production that might feel real where someone with a lone wolf kind of extremist personality is amongst the other people who passionately care. Mm. And how do you manage that person from the inside, from the outside as a spectator? So I think that would be a really unique experience. Oh, yeah. And very contemporary with what's happening in other places in the world, but relevant to us because it's in the, in the setting of our, the issues that we care about here. So interesting. Oh, that yeah. sounds awesome. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how the wind and the rain will fit into that one quite so much. Yeah. But you know, UH Foundation, lots of different groups use our upper lanai for formal receptions and they what's, they have found a way. What's the name of that show again? A House Divided. A House Divided. And that's yeah. in what time of year? That is in October. October. Yeah. Okay. And it's directed by MFA candidate uh, Kevin C. K. Berg who's actually directing Next to Normal for Chaminade's Collegiate Summer Theater Festival oh, right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that is his thesis. What an production. awesome experience for him to get mm -hmm. to, to, to get to be that flexible with the mm -hmm. space that he's doing. I, uh, I went to high school in a theater that had theater in the round. Mm. Exclusively. Nice. And yeah, it just gives you something. Act with your back. Yeah, <laughs> you, when, you, when you have to get into an immersive experience like mm -hmm. that, yeah. yeah. That's cool for your students, for the director. Okay, then what? What comes next? Uh, then moving on through the season, uh, well, we have uh, Late Night Theater, which is a student-run theater group that is housed by our department. So they vote for t two different productions per semester, usually. Their first production will be a 24-hour play festival. You're probably familiar with those, mm -hmm. where the clock starts, and 24 hours later, there's a written play with actors that have learned their lines, you hope, and uh, production. So that will, the date hasn't been exactly set for that, okay. um, but that will be in and amongst the fall, early fall semester shows. And their second show will be a devised show, which is, you know, a type of theater that is taking over the nation, at least in collegiate theater, where you have, in our case, it's Nathaniel Niemi and Aubrey Watkins are leading the devising of this piece called The Thin Man on the Ladder. And uh, Nathaniel actually won the national award for directing from the Kennedy Center's American Collegiate Theater Festival this year. Uh -huh. So he was number one recognized um, and in our program. So we'll take advantage of that. And uh, he and Aubrey uh, will be creating that piece together with their cast. It's the nature of the, dev the devised piece. So those are part of our late night series, which it's all student-run, student-chosen, student-costumed, lit, um, every function. They're fairly autonomous in that, and it's later at night, so our students are attracted to the late-night theater hour and oh, kind yeah. of that extra edgy, experimental um, mood, I guess. That's cool. And they're yes. also, are they going to also be able to decide where their shows are then? Yes. That's yes. cool. Within reason, but there's so many uh, theatrically designed classrooms on campus that I've been, I go to a room for a meeting or a class and I covet it mm -hmm. because it's got a sound system and it's got great walls to project on and, you know, sometimes ramps like the Hanamichi, we, you know, we end up building. So, you know, the art building has great rooms. There's the Campus Center ballroom. There's little mini theaters around. And then there's these outdoor spaces that, you know, I've yeah. been outside of Kumukuhua Theater and looked at your little, uh, your little green space there, and I'm thinking of 12 different shows yeah. that would be so much fun. We're going to be using that this year. Excellent. <laughs> yes. um, also, we have our Dance and Technology concert coming in November. That is our main stage dance concert, and it'll be directed by Amy Schiffner and Kara Miller. And Kara's specialty is dance plus technology. Mm. Like, so 
that we're negotiating with a warehouse in the Kaka'ako area, with our backup being the Campus Center Ballroom, but thinking of taking this innovative work and putting it in an unusual space to add physically to the out of the boxness that's going on and creating surfaces that you can project on that are interactive with the dancers and the audience may be moving through spaces to experience that. Uh, the dance concert has all sorts of flavors. There's hula and Balinese and modern and jazz and you name it. They're all kind of woven into this theme of dance plus technology. And they're also, they'll be showing as part of this concert a film that is being created with the Academy for Creative Media on campus. Oh. I believe it will be its debut performance. I can't promise that. Um, but Kara has set up some relationships between our university and other entities and other countries where they have dance happening kind of across the internet together in coordination. Mm. You know, kind of the, the live streaming thing that yeah. is catching on everywhere. So I expect a lot of surprises in that and some interesting textures and mood and movement and relationships between space and people. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I have to say, well, I've, I've always, enjo I've enjoyed all of the shows that I've seen at Kennedy and you do, while, while we're talking, Zuri is showing us some of these pictures of your really lavish productions and you uh, have done an amazing job with, um, I, I, I always think of, you know, when I was in school, uh, someone said to us, yeah, enjoy the costumes and the sets here because you're all getting spoiled. And, yeah. it's not, and then you go to Chicago and you do a show in a garage. Yes. You know? Yeah. Uh, so, you're, yes, your students have an opportunity to be wonderfully spoiled. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but now there's going to be, they and the audiences are going to get to be spoiled in a different mm -hmm. way. And, and um, have to discover different things, you know, well, when you're dancing not on a stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a, as a theater producer administrator, I think this is a fantastic experience for our directors, our designers, and our performers to experience going into a space and putting up a show like a touring show does. You know, any of these, anyone who is using a commercial theater has experienced going in on a Sunday, teching on Monday, dress Tuesday, dress Wednesday, open Thursday, run, and you load out Sunday night. So I love that this is preparing them for what they may experience in the real world. Oh, yeah. It's you a know. wonderful experience for them. Sometimes you're coming in on Friday and you're doing a show Friday night yes. and then you're washing your costume in the sink yes. in your room. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Not that I've been there, but yeah, I've been there. Um, okay, let's, uh, we'll come back and finish up your season in sure. just a moment. We're going to take a break really quick. Please stay with us. If you would like to ask Jessica any questions as we are talking, you may do so at, if you tweet uh, at thinktechhi. We'll see you in about a minute. Aloha. It's summertime in Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm your host for Shrink Wrap Hawaii. We're on every Tuesday at 3 o'clock, and we talk about mental health and general health. Join us. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Chantel Seville, host of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. This show is for you. It's all about inspiring and empowering girls of the future to do what they love, get out there and be healthy, fit and confident. If you're up for that, 11 a.m. every Wednesday, I'll see you there. Aloha! This is Rez McJackal. The University of Hawaii football team under Rolovich is going to kick butt this season. In case you didn't understand me, University of Hawaii football team is going to kick butt under Rolovich this season. So be sure to follow us on Think Tech Hawaii and Hibachi Top. I'll be at every game. And remember, aloha! Hi, we're back at Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network. I'm Donna Blanchard, your host and proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. And we're coming to you from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumukuhua Theater. We're talking with the Kennedy Theater manager, Jessica Jacob. And we're right in the middle of your season, so don't keep us on the edge of our seats any longer. <laughs> what comes next? <laughs> ah, we return from Christmas for Twelfth Night. Uh, this is directed by Paul Mitri, who recently directed Sunday in the Park and before that Blythe Spirit and many, many others. He is a Shakespeare specialist, which is fantastic. And this production, we expect, 
We don't have the signature, but we expect it to be in the Campus Center ballroom, which is perfect because he's setting Twelfth Night in, kind of as he puts it, Twelfth Night meets Strictly Ballroom. Ooh. So Foxtrot and Tango and Big Band and Glitz and Shine and Sequins. Um, so t once again, taking advantage of the true purpose of a space and using it for what it is instead of creating one on stage. And then the, the audience is in that ballroom with them for this production. So that's in late January, early February. Okay. And then we have a very unique piece called Smile You're Under Surveillance that Marcus Wessendorf is putting together. It's a devised piece as well. And it is featuring the, the experience of the whistleblower Edward Snowden. Oh. So it's kind of exploring what he experienced in, an, in a very innovative fashion. Uh, Marcus seems to specialize in the surveillance state and kind of political theater and that kind of thing. So I think that it'll be a very interesting room to be in during that production. Oh, cool. Yeah, I know I have my own image of what it's going to look like, but I have no idea what it's really going to look like. <laughs> um, but I think it will be memorable. For sure. Okay, it sounds yeah. interesting. I'm thinking like Pokemon Go. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that's part of our culture. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> so we are seriously under surveillance. <laughs> that's, yeah, everybody is. But we're here now. now. Yeah. But are you doing it anyway? <laughs> no, oh. not yet. Not yet. I'm holding out. I've delayed gratification, you know. It's all I can do to not check and see if there isn't one right here in the studio. That's with right, us. right here. <laughs> yes, okay. and then we, we end our main stage season with Power and Folly, a Japanese satire for the 21st 21st century. Uh, it's a Kyogen style piece, which is that medieval Japanese samurai nobility oh. level theater that was produced. They do a, a no play, the very meditative, serene, etc. no play, dreamlike, and then a Kyogen, and then a no, and then a Kyogen when they do a cycle of those plays. Uh, this is Kyogen, 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 Kyogen. So they're shorter plays, comedic in nature. Um, and the director, Dr. Julie Yetzi, who's our Japanese theater specialist, is selecting a suite of these plays that will cover everything from traditional Japanese theater to crossover theater to a Hawaiian, a Hawaii Island-based theater satirizing the monorail experience. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so... Um, we can look forward to uh, a playful teasing or more yeah. um, about some of the, the issues that face us today on the island. And not just that, but other things that hopefully will elicit a chuckle from the audience when they're addressed. Yeah. Well, and so that definitely sounds like theater you're not going to get anywhere else. Absolutely not. That. Absolutely not. And all of these... All of these offerings are, as I was saying, outside of the box, but intellectually, physically, you know, geographically, um, they're, they're all over the place. They are all over the place. Um, okay, so the program that, uh, and forgive my ignorance here, every year at the school there mm -hmm. is a show that I believe the students are immersed in in classes for mm -hmm. up to a year yes. to prepare for those. Yes. Like the... Um, like the Wang District this year or Chinese Jinju or yes. Kabuki. Yeah, that is the Kyogen this year is our Asian theater offering. Yeah. Um, and the master teachers fly in from Japan and work one-on-one -on -one or one-on-three, depending on the scene, with uh, the current students. And I actually, um, I know some of these teachers because I flew over to Kyoto and did their program a couple of times in Japan. Oh, um, and it's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime, other than if you go, <laughs> um, a once-in-a-lifetime <laughs> experience to have you know, the Arnold Schwarzenegger of Japan coming in and teaching you one-on-one, -on -one, or maybe the De Niro, <laughs> uh, through a translator or not, um, and shadowing and finding the physical movements with them. And Kyogen is so much about finding the correct kind of, oh, what do you call it, roller coaster of vocal quality. Oh, yeah. Because it's a very big vocal piece. Um, so, Those are so exciting to see. Yeah. The program is exciting. It's, it, for me, thrilling to know that we offer that program here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went, to, I went to a wonderful school. It was ranked very high in the nation for undergraduate mm -hmm. um, acting training at the time. 
we didn't have that sort of immersion and that sort of opportunity to have, um, you know, a year of study to get ready to do a, a Beijing opera. That's yeah, really this, this is the place. Um, when I went to graduate school here, it was the only, I think, post-baccalaureate program in Asian theater in the world for master PhD level. I don't know if that's still true, but it's certainly the most established and respected. So I think our position yeah. in the Pacific is, is an absolutely critical and wonderful way to have that merging of East and West and yeah. coming together to create amazing pieces of art. And the school's taking advantage of it. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, so just really quickly, if people want to learn about the season or, or uh, sign, get a subscription right mm -hmm. away, where should they go? Uh, they can go to our website, which is manoa.hawaii.edu slash live on stage all one word, live on stage, live on stage, it's up to you. <laughs> uh, and navigating within there, you can find out about schools, school shows, about public shows, about subscriptions. Our subscription discount is up to 35% if you order before September 2nd. So that certainly helps out. Nice. And um, if you are able to come along with us wherever we go in our locations, you can subscribe today. So. Uh, I hope that, yeah, well, I know you have a really good subscription base, mm -hmm. subscriber base, and I have no doubt that those people are going to come along with you, mm -hmm. truly. And I would hope that there are new people are going to say, I, I want to get on board with that. That's new and different. And like I said, in Chicago, you go see shows in garages. And mm -hmm. a friend of mine went to uh, the New Yorker conference and saw shows in like a hallway and you're you know, <laughs> moving around the bowels of a building, watching little vign vignettes here mm -hmm. and there. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, every now and then you want to sit down and watch The Nutcracker, but mm -hmm. then for the rest of the year, let's get out and do something completely different that you will never experience again. Mm -hmm. So I hope it helps your subscription sales. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> when you put together the budget for the year, mm -hmm. did you know, I don't know when your annual budget is, but you know, did you know that you were going to have to be this mobile out of the box? <laughs> yeah. Um, we are, we're aware of that. There's, you know, our, our, we are pretty much a self-sustaining program in some ways. Our ticket revenue pays for our sets, and we get uh, support from the Student Fee Board. Thank you, Student Fee Board. The Asian Theater Program gets support from the Chancellor, and our directors are very good about going out and finding grants. However, within that, you know, the, the grants, the support, plus our ticket sales, that's how we pay for our season. So there's no actual um, rehoming budget that's coming from anywhere else. Mm. So if any of these venues, who so far have negotiated wonderfully with us, um, the cost of that will need to come from ticket sales or other support that we're getting. It's, there's no kind of rehoming budget yeah. um, gotcha. built into the system. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you need a, our little grassy area out of the <laughs> Don't <laughs> say that. Home, I have a lot know. of ideas. Let me know. That's cool. So let's talk about you just a little bit. Okay. And I'm, I'm sorry, but we're, you're, you're, <laughs> I'm season good. is so exciting. We got, um, so you came to us directly from Alaska? Yeah. Alaska Children's Theater? Alaska correct? Theater of Youth. Uh, okay. Yep. How did um, you end up there? Well, I, I actually went up to Alaska for the summer in 1994. Oops. <laughs> like many people, you go up for the summer and 20 years go by. Uh -huh. um, I actually, I moved out of Alaska three times and ended up back there, including coming here for graduate school from 03 to 06, saying anywhere but Alaska, and boom, back in Alaska. But they have a, an extremely rich art, artistic community. Like the talent there is incredible. The talent pool is incredible. The level of performance is so surprising. And I think it's because it's dark and cold. Mm. So there's very little competition for going outside and playing unless you're a skier in the winter. So we see a lot of movies, we eat a lot of food, and we uh, watch a lot of theater. Uh, is it a community that embraces theater that will come out and see shows and fill seats? I, I sure think so. I mean, we have... Uh, very good Broadway series presenters. They bring in all the big shows. They do very well. Um, our Alaska Center for the Performing Arts is state of the art, gorgeous, 2100 seat house, an 800 seat house, and a 350 seat house all in one building. Oh. And my youth theater had the privilege of performing in the 350 seat house in you know, the finest uh, production facility in the state, which was incredible for the kids because it's oh, yeah. 
you know, state-of-the-art lighting systems, state-of-the-art control boards, um, passing in the halls, the, the Broadway cast of Shrek or the Broadway cast of any given show. Oh, wow. Um, at one point, and this was several years ago, when I was performing on that stage with a community group, Gregory Hines came onto our stage and tap danced for us. Oh, my goodness. You know, it's moments like that, that when you're working in a professional house, side by side with, you know, this little youth theater doing Secret Garden or doing uh, Godspell, all of the above, uh, and just telling them, do not stick your head in their dressing room as you go by. <laughs> they can talk to you, but you can't talk to them. You know, oh. we're doing Little Mermaid, and we got a report that the eel was talking to one of the, you know, people from Mamma Mia or whatever show was happening at the time. <laughs> but um, let, let me ask yeah. about um, uh, de the demographics of the people who are coming to, to see your shows and They're, the people here. who saw the shows. Both. I'm wondering about both mm. theaters, and I can tell mm. you, at Kumu, we get about 30 percent of our uh, audience is. Caucasian. They look like us. Mm. And d that is definitely the majority. The rest of the various cultures that we see are, you know, plentiful, mm -hmm. uh, but no one with about a 30% demographic. What do you have? What did you mm. have in Alaska? Well, Alaska is, uh, is heavily Caucasian, mm. although we have the most languages spoken in any grade school, middle school, or high school. Some of these schools have 200 languages spoken. Oh, wow. Part of that, I believe, is the military presence, because mm -hmm. there's a couple of bases right there. And Alaska is still very much an open portal for immigration, because come on up, we got lots of room, we got lots of jobs, yeah. come on. Um, so it's, it's a very welcoming position there. And so we had um, excellent diversity in our casts. Um, which was awesome because the this theater program pulled from every school in the bowl so you know 300 300,000 people it was kind of an opportunity for kids who would never encounter each other to build new peer groups oh. which was awesome for kids that weren't succeeding socially in their own schools they could come and create their own social group within this cast which is built to support each other. That's wonderful. Um, so them and their families, you know. Okay, yeah. good. I'm sorry, we have to wrap up. Okay. About the same for Kennedy? Kennedy, it yeah. depends on the show. Oh, People okay. follow their interests. <laughs> so the, the gotcha. demographic changes wildly from show to show. Gotcha. Thank you yeah. so much for being here. Thank you. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you for watching the show. There's a few other people that I'd like to thank here in the studio. Our interns, Diamond and Emily. Thank you very much. Our, we lost one. Um, uh, <laughs> our floor manager, Rich Pravis, thank you very much for your help, Rich. And our studio overlord, Zuri Bender, who is in my ear. Thank you, Zuri. I'd also <laughs> like to thank Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put all of this together. Thank you, and we will see you next week, 2 o'clock on Wednesdays for Center Stage. Bye.